People always ask me, Quinn, wouldn't it be so cool if Apple made a digital camera? And actually they did in 1992. Today's video review is of the Apple Quick Take 200. Let's get started. Now the Apple Quick Take 200 wasn't actually the 1992 model. This was the 1996 revision. It was the third and final revision made to the Quick Take line before Steve Jobs returned to Apple after his 11 year leave of absence and killed off the Quick Take line. The Quick Take line in and of itself was very unusual because it wasn't an Apple product. It was simply an Apple branded product from another manufacturer. Now the Quick Take 100 and the 150 were both Kodak cameras. Quick Take 100 was Macintosh only and it was released in 92. In 94, we saw the Quick Take 150, which was Macintosh and Windows uh, compatible, not XP, not even, you know, 1998. I mean, it was very archaic and uh, it, it's just funny to see how much technology has, you know, evolved in the past 15 years. But in this bad boy, this was uh, made by Fujifilm. The first two models in the Quick Take line were made by Kodak and Kodak was the only manufacturer making digital cameras. In 1992, Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, everyone that was making cameras was still on film. And Kodak was the only one that was really progressive, which is kind of funny because Kodak seems like the old ancient company that hasn't changed. They were actually really progressive back in 92. And that's why Apple paid Kodak to stick an Apple logo on one of their computer on one of their cameras and market it themselves. They didn't want to build one from scratch because they didn't know optics. Kodak had been in the industry forever and it's kind of why people were skeptical of the iPhone successfulness because they'd never been in the, you know, the cell phone market. Luckily they pulled it off, but uh, you know, had Apple tried to manufacture their own camera, I don't believe they would have been successful. Now, in 1996 they made the Quick Take 200 and this was the first Apple camera that was actually one of Apple's own. One of the interesting things was it was also one of the digital the first digital cameras to really take on this modern body uh, style that we see today. Now it didn't sell very well because it had a retail price of $600 and you know considering film cameras were substantially cheaper in fact you could get uh, an SLR with great optics for about the same price versus this uh, digital camera that you know you had to hook it up to your computer and you couldn't just take it to the store developed and it was such a pain I have the tables turned um, but you know it, it it just was way too expensive and that's why it didn't really make it in the market and ultimately was one of Apple's big failures. Down here on the bottom we have the serial number. There is no date of manufacture. was a little bit disappointing but it was made in Japan and uh, down here we have the battery compartment where it houses four AA batteries. There was no rechargeable battery which was pretty interesting because it was one of the first products that Apple had done that didn't run on a proprietary rechargeable battery. Right here we have a one inch display which is pretty cool because it's a color display and uh, you know you're able to view that. Now it did come with a viewfinder but it wasn't the viewfinder you might be thinking of. It just snapped on the top and was a piece of glass. It might have even been plastic and you look through the plastic but the problem is if uh, you had something perfectly aligned up here it, it, it was different down here because you know the lenses are in a different location. So the viewfinder was ultimately pointless and this was really what you wanted to use to uh, kind of center and adjust your pictures because this was what was going to be uh, taken out of this versus the viewfinder which was in an entirely different location. So that was kind of weird of Apple to do but um, they did it. Now one of the reasons this is an interesting model to me is it brings a lot of features that um, are now all digital but back in the day none of these digital cameras had these capabilities. The Quick Take 100 and the 150 were simply point and shoot. You took the picture, it was fixed focus, there was no macro capabilities, there were no depth of you know, field capability, it was just your classic point and shoot camera. And uh, you know, it really had evolved with the Quick Take 200. You have this focus knob here, you could do macro shots and you could get unbelievably close to the lens. By the way here, um, this takes beautiful 640 by uh, 480, pixel pictures, which is, I believe, VGA, which I believe is on the front of the iPhone 4. So the lens in here, uh, although substantially smaller in the iPhone 4, is the same one you have in your modern technology. So some stuff carries over, you know, it doesn't totally evolutionize. Granted, it is in a phone with a touch display, and this was, this is huge, but I mean, uh, it's pretty cool how technology advances. But um, it had, it, you know, so pixel 
density was terrible. I mean, they were really awful pictures. And it came with a 0.3 megapixel sensor, which again, back in the day, was pretty impressive with a fixed eight millimeter focal length. Now, right here, you could focus, like I said, you could do macro shots, you could do, uh, you know, just medium shots, like under three feet. And then you could do landscape or regular shots where you could get everything in focus and you could get your subject forward. And, you know, and this was what was interesting to me is it has selectable apertures. There's an open aperture or a closed aperture. So you could actually theoretically create somewhat of a depth of field look and you can also allow how much light comes in and out which was really interesting to me and uh, you know this is all done automatically now or if you go into manual mode it's all done uh, you know still automatically I mean you're not digitally adjusting the actual lens but right here if you can see it might be a little bit tough but you can actually see now nah, you can't see on the camera but I can actually see the optics switching out it's pretty funny and uh, it's something that is a little bit different. You actually did have a, a little light. I don't, I don't think it was an LED back in the day, but it was a little light that was red that would indicate to you, um, you know, when, when the camera was counting down. Now there was no menu button. All of the menu controls were on this knob here. So this is where you did everything. And I'm gonna show you each one and kind of what this does. Now this up and down button was to navigate when you were reviewing your pictures in this setting. And then this was to uh, select extra options uh, such as you know, clicking, deleting, and, you know, choosing exactly where you would want things to go. But uh, let's turn it on real quick. You just slide this slider over and uh, it turns on. Right now it's in PC mode and I don't have a card. That's because it uses what's called smart media. And smart, smart card media is no longer manufactured. No manufacturer still uses it. This uh, came with a two megabyte card and was expandable to four megabytes. They're actually like 60 bucks on eBay because they're pretty dang hard to find. But it was a card that slid in there. There was no compact flash. There was no... You know, there's nothing of the like. I mean, it was very archaic um, in, in terms of, you know, what you got on there. So there wasn't a whole lot to that. But um, on the side here, you had uh, some basic ports. You had a, a DB, or excuse me, you had a, a an external power in, a six volt in, and then you had a video out. This was just a RCA out, but there was no HD, so you didn't need to worry about that. And then this was uh, to hook up to your computer via the serial on your Macintosh. So, I mean, that was a very weird looking slot, but there was no USB back in the day, so there were no fancy ports. It was just uh, straight out to your computer. Now, um, again, this smart card media was really obscure. It's this weird, you know, card that slides in there. Uh, there was a two megabyte and four megabyte uh, card that you could buy. They were both five volts, which was interesting. And they actually retained a lot of the system settings. So sometimes a lot of the menus you'd see on digital cameras would actually be stored on the card and not inside um, what would be like the ROM or the firmware on the on the chip on the computer or on the cameras now, which is kind of bizarre. But um, like I said, two megabyte and four megabyte models, which uh, was capable of holding 20 and or 30 pictures depending on the uh, the quality in which they were taken. So right here we have PC mode. Uh, it says, hey, connect to PC, what are you doing? Uh, let's get things done. So you have your PC mode here. That would allow you to hook up to your Mac. You had your countdown timer. So this was a self timer that would um, you know, say, hey, you have 10 seconds and then we're gonna take the picture. You had a regular. This was, uh, this was the, they actually called it record. Now that doesn't mean video, but that's to record a picture. And uh, this was the fine mode. It, when it was taking fine pictures, um, it could do 20 of them on the included two megabyte card. And then if you went to the lower resolution here, the just the regular record mode, you could take a whopping 30 pictures um, as opposed to, what was it on a film strip? Like 24 or something like that? So, you know, it, pretty cool. I mean, yeah, they weren't, this is another reason they weren't that useful is, they didn't hold hundreds of pictures. I mean, they held as many pictures as did a roll of film. And on a roll of film, you could pop it out and stick a new one and you could keep taking pictures. But with this, you need a computer. There were no laptops back then that were, you know, practical. So you'd have to go to your home computer. And that's, again, why these really, in the end, failed. Now, um, we're going to switch the focus here. And I just have a few notes. But you can see that that is pretty well crisp. Actually, amazingly crisp. And I'm like right on the text. So it's pretty cool. And this camera is a, a very good one considering, you know, the, the time in which it was manufactured and, you know, who manufactured it. And so it's pretty cool. You can see my hand. There you go. Anyway, so that was that setting. And uh, this setting was to review your photos. Uh, I don't have a smart card in, so I can't really show you. But you navigate up and down with these arrows and then select it for more options. But you could review all the pictures that you've taken. This was a slideshow mode. So if you were hooked up via the RCA input on the side, you could uh, have like a little slideshow on your TV, which was kind of funny. Right here, you can uh, protect 
or make sure any of your, you know, you'd go down and select a picture and say, do not delete this. So it would not go away. And then there was an actual garbage button. So you could go through and then you'd select which pictures you want to delete it. That was pretty much it though. There's your shutter button. There's no like halfway hold press again, as there was no focus. So you just press it once and that takes the picture. It's a very basic product. And you know, ultimately in the end it failed because it was too much, it was too much money. Didn't help more pictures. Um, I mean, it didn't, it held the same amount of pictures as a film camera, but Film cameras, you could swap out cartridges and you'd be good to go. And uh, with, you know, digital cameras, it just wasn't it. So it really failed in the end and Jobs killed it immediately after he came back to Apple. And they really went back to the basics and, you know, they created the iMac, which is the Apple we know today. But uh, this is a very fun product. Uh, they're still on eBay. You can find them for relatively cheap, 30, 50, 60 bucks. And they're a great collector's item to have. So thank you so much for watching. That's Snaz, the iPhone guy here, signing off with you with the Quick Take 200, the world's best terrible discontinued camera. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.